How's it going, everyone? We are back again, checking out more week one goodness. Uh, this episode, we're going to be checking out FanDuel Optimal lineups. Um, our our friend and, and my co-host, Jason Gilbalt, has uh, thrown in the optimizer and letting it do some work for us. So um, I, I think this is something that I especially used in baseball season and something I've been grinding out all week, figuring out my cash and tournament lineups. So, I mean, if you haven't checked them out yet, there is a free trial. So definitely, you know, look that up um, and at least give us a give us a try week one. Um, so I guess let's just get into it here. What, what did the, uh, the cash lineup spit out for you? And were you in favor? Were you disagreeing? Or were you, did you pass out and, and not even, you know, really even look at the lineup? I think, I mean, I looked at, I looked here and I, I felt, you know, pretty comfortable with what it, I, everything I saw, it, it made sense to me. It, it certainly made sense. And, and I ran this as is, I, I didn't lock, you know, exclude anyone. It just like, I, I hit reset I, I generated it and this is what came out and and obviously i mean looking here at the cash projections that prescott came out at, as kind of expected i think you're going to get that with a lot of optimizers because he's so cheap in terms of points per dollar value he's going to be there in, in cash I'm, I'm fine with him i think you and i are in, are in agreement as far as a must play goes i'm not going to be going that far with him um but he does set out well i mean decent matchup i think the floor is decent enough for cash games ceiling I'm not jumping all over it, but I think he's an okay play at quarterback here. I guess it's truly how you feel about the the high end wide receivers this week. Um, I think you can fade Dak and get similar production from DeAndre Hopkins as some of the top end options, but in cash with that ownership, especially if you're playing, you know, double ups and fifty fifties, it's going to be tough to really talk yourself into actually fading him in a cash game. So um, while it's not a perfect play, you do sort of look at that Dallas defense. I mean, I, I don't see fitting in Odell Beckham, Antonio Brown, Jordan Reed, you know, D'Angelo Williams to a lineup. That's that's pretty optimal in my eyes. Yeah, and that's the thing we're looking at here. It's you, you put Prescott in, and it's like, okay, what else do you get around him? And, and as you stated, I mean, obviously Spencer Ware, 5,400, going to be a, a fairly chalky cash game running back for value. I don't mind him. I, I like the running back pairing here in terms of value. Spencer Ware, D'Angelo Williams, both plus matchups for me. Um, I think the prices really match up well. And then we jump into that wide receiver tier. And this is where I disagree actually a little bit um, in terms of cash games. I like Doug Baldwin. I like that value at 6,700. He's a great play. Odell Beckham, Antonio Brown. Obviously, there's four kind of top tier wideouts in terms of daily fantasy. Julio Jones and DeAndre Hopkins are the other two. I actually like those two more than I do Brown and Beckham this week. So I think that's where I differ a little bit here. But obviously, it's kind of hard to argue against Brown and Beckham as well. But I mean, and if that's the case, you you can swap Jones in. You can swap um, Hopkins in. There's leeway with, with what you want to do with this lineup. And, and as you stated, I mean, Jordan Reed, that's where that front kind of value in terms of where Williams Prescott, then you kind of get that elite tight end because really – you know, Gronk's not really an elite tight end that I'm looking to pay up for. Uh, you do have some secondary options like Ertz, who, who pops up later on. And then you're also getting a top-tier defense. So uh, overall, I, the Prescott thing really opens up a lot. And, and kind of that second half of the lineup is, is the ceiling, the floor is still very high. And again, if you're using the optimizer, it's going to give you more than one lineup. Um, this is just what they think is the very best lineup. Um, so, I mean, I think this is the core we're initially looking at, at, at the very least, you know? So again, like you mentioned, you can be versatile with Julio and, and Hopkins, and that's certainly the way I'm leaning. Um, and that, that opens up to, you know, bump up a Doug Baldwin or, or maybe bump up a Spencer Ware, um, a few tiers. So, um, that's certainly what I'm looking at. I, I like the Chiefs defense as well. Um, Chris Boswell, sure. I mean, I, I think this is a nice, nice lineup for sure. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, kicker. How much really? I, I'll trust the optimizer when it in terms of of, of choosing a kicker. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's that's kind of where I'm going with that. I think yeah. I think the numbers kind of sort themselves out there. Yeah, definitely. And and moving on to the GPP projections when I put those in. Um, so Dak Prescott did not show up. It, it, Russell Wilson came in, and Russell Wilson's a guy who I like. I I love in week one. I like him in all formats. Uh, you're still getting the Doug Baldwin, Russell Wilson pairing, Antonio Brown, and the running backs are still the same. 
The one big move here that I saw that was interesting was Brandon Marshall at 7,700 coming into the lineup, which I actually don't mind in terms of ownership here. I actually don't mind his his uh, ceiling because it looks like he's going to avoid Jones for Cincinnati this week, which bodes bodes well for his upside. And, and obviously he's just kind of a target machine. And, and as a kind of a drop off behind Hopkins, we obviously there's Brandon Cooks, T.Y. Hilton. There's all these guys here in that tier. I don't see Brandon Marshall being highly owned. You're going to have to really dig deep and be different to kind of really make a move across the field there. And, and Brandon Marshall, I, I really don't have a problem with here. Yeah, and so as as the weeks have as the week has gone on and sort of this Kansas City Chiefs Spencer Ware optimal play. It, there's a little shade being thrown at it right now with Turk Hendrick West being ahead on the depth chart with Jamal Charles potentially, you know, playing and practicing. I'm, I think Charles Sims at 47 is a very interesting play and kind of swerve off him. And if you do that, I mean, you can bump up Doug Baldwin. And I think that might be something I look at. Um, if not, I mean, I do like this lineup. And if you want to stack Baldwin and Wilson, I'm certainly not going to, you know, uh, discourage that in a tournament. I just think I think there's room to move there, um, and and I certainly like, you know, Marshall as a nice contrarian play as well. Yeah, and I mean, there's another. I mean, you can come off Antonio Brown. I feel like we've talked about quite a few mid-range wide receiver options um, that we like a lot here. So I mean, obviously you want to get that tier one kind of wide receiver in there, but you know what? It's not a must for me in a GPP. I think you know what you can go Williams and, and a Lamar Miller at, at running back and and drop down Brown to a, another kind of guy in the seven K range. So this one, I mean, obviously, you know, w one of the good things about optimizers is we have the swap feature. So if you you get a kind of a base there, if if you don't want to tweak it a little bit, we have that feature to kind of go with. So um, you know, it's a good base. Obviously, I like the the back half of this lineup. Zach Ertz is a nice cheap guy, fifty seven hundred. I like. And then Texans defense really has a ton of upside as well. The the swap feature is like it's it's like a piece of pie and it's just so good. And then you look back at the end and you're like, oh my God, am I overusing this because this is just fun? Or am I actually doing this because I, I think this is the right move? It's it's super fun to check out at the very least. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mostly trust the optimizer with these plays this is pretty much where I'm headed as well. Um, last one here, the the stack. So it, it appears to me it was the, the Seahawks stack against the Dolphins with um, Lockett Baldwin and, and Wilson. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. And uh, obviously we've seen Wilson, we've seen Baldwin already. We've seen all these guys outside of Lockett come in. Uh, so Lockett's really the new face that we need to talk about. In, in terms of the Seattle receiving core, it's not the most trustworthy in terms of where the production's going to come from on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, and I think that's what kind of makes it super contrarian in a GPP. Because, you know, if you do get that Tyler Lockett hit, you do get that Jermaine Curse hit you know, it, it certainly pays off in terms of ownership. And I don't think Wilson or Baldwin are going to be that high. I mean, Baldwin might carry a little bit of ownership because he is a decent price. But just in comparison to all the other stacks that you can go with, Detroit, Green Bay, New Orleans, Oakland, um, Indianapolis, I mean, this is certainly not going to be a high-owned stack. And, and uh, I was a bit surprised in, in comparison to what other options you could have done. It's not my favorite stack, but I do like it in, in terms of being contrarian. Yeah, and as far as Russell Wilson's price goes, I mean, I think you might be right in terms of ownership because there is that Aaron Rodgers there, there is that Andrew Luck there. Um, I I like this lineup as well. I'm just having a tough time using two Seattle receivers. I, I might disagree there. I like using one quite a bit, whether it's Baldwin or Lockett. Um, I do like both of those options. I do not like playing them together. I think you could use a, a Dante Moncrief instead or, or someone like that, maybe a Michael Crabtree, um, and either pay up, you know, get that extra 1000 or more with Baldwin or, or even sort of look at that, you know, extra money with Lockett and, and, and improve somewhere else. Right, and that's one of the big differences from those teams that I named. I mean, you look at those stacks, Breeze, Cooks, uh, Willie Sneed, you know, you look Luck, Hilton, Monk. If you have three top-tier options that kind of pair, you after Baldwin, it is a big drop-off in terms of what you're going to be getting. So I, I do I do agree with you. That's why it's kind of not my favorite stack in comparison. But 
in, in terms of ownership and mixing it in, I, I think, you know, on, on a week one here where there's a lot of chalk, what the hell? I I do like Lockett as a GPP play. That's, you know, I just want to make that clear as I've already made clear, but for some reason I felt the need to make it even more extremely clear, bolded, italicized, uh, and with an exclamation point at the end. I, I think they are very interesting plays, just not together. Yep, no, I definitely agree. And I think that is what we're looking at. We threw in... The, the optimizer threw in uh, Dustin Hopkins and, and Houston Texans, so I like those calls as well. Certainly like Texans as both a tournament and cash move against Jay Cutler and the always, you know, it, he's always an interception thrown. Prone, what do we so. say, two or three, two or three picks? All I need is that one pick six, baby. <laughs> First pass of the season, I can just see it now. Going to Alson Jeffrey, someone sneaks under him, bang. That's what we're hoping for. Um, so I guess that's all for this week. Uh, thanks for checking it out. And as always, uh, we, we talked about the optimizer a bunch. It's certainly worth checking out, especially with a lot of new features we threw in this year. So, uh, definitely head on over there and we will catch you guys next week.